When you and me cannot talk and we are in a deadlock, call the mediator to get us together. Mediation is the way to go. Everybody, mediation is the way to go for conflict resolution. Let us heal our nation. Good day, St. Lucia, and welcome to our launch of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Campaign. This campaign is spearheaded by the Registry of the Supreme Court St. Lucia in collaboration with Compete Caribbean. I am your host, Lisa Evans, and today we have three experienced panelists who will speak with us about mediation, its benefits, and the ways in which it can advance commerce and business in St. Lucia. Welcome panelists. Thank you. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Can we introduce um, ourselves to our viewers? Uh, my name is Francis Compton and I am a trained mediator and in addition to that they style me as the regional mediation coordinator. Okay, welcome, Mr. Compton. Yes, my name is Andrea St. Rose, and I am a trained mediator. And in addition to being a chartered accountant, I am also an attorney at law. Thank you, Ms. St. Rose. Yes, right. Lisa, I am also a trained mediator, mediator um, but um, my main role at this time is as a high court judge um, to be the head of the mediation committee, court connected mediation committee, uh, which manages uh, mediation in the high court. Okay, all right. Well, the saying goes that the first will be last and the last will be first. <laughs> so <laughs> you were the last to introduce yourself. Yes. Uh, Justice Bell, could you tell us a bit about the history of mediation in St. Lucia? Okay. Um, there's an old uh, jazz standard. I don't know if anybody here is a jazz enthusiast. This is jazz time in St. Lucia, but uh, old jazz standard called What a Difference a Day Makes. And um, if we're looking at the impact of mediation, we have to go back to the time when the civil procedure rules were introduced in the Eastern Caribbean. And those rules were introduced for the express purpose of ensuring that the court could manage its case load better than what obtained prior to the, the inception of those rules. So we had rules that not only tried to manage the conduct of cases in terms of the material being filed, how they should be filed, how they should be managed as the matters actually went to court, mm -hmm. but also introducing for the first time the use of ADR and in particular mediation as part of those rules, and as part of the system of justice of tr uh, trying to have matters managed justly and expediting matters uh, in, a, in a time which is you know, helpful to everyone, in yes. other words, as, as quickly as possible. Not that speed is the, mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. objective, but not to waste time right. in situations where people are looking at technical issues right. rather than looking at how they can, what they have in common and how they can resolve differences. So the, the wow. inception, from the inception of the CPR, the, it was written into the CPR okay. that uh, ADR would be part of the, the court's repertoire, so to speak. Yes. You start at the very beginning of the rules and you see that the rules require that lawyers and in, in other, any officer of the court, is, the primary objective is to um, make sure that cases are dealt with justly Just. and uh, expedited. So that then refers you to another rule which says when you're managing a case, one of the things that you should refer to the parties is mm. the availability of mediation or ADR. Okay as a route to resolving the issues in your matter. So these are things where, these are, are, are instruments uh, available right. and, and mechanisms available under the rules of the court for parties who are involved in disputes to immediately look at the opportunity that exists to settle those disputes. Now okay. I know that the, 
court in St. Lucia. It was uh, spearheaded in St. Lucia, first of all. And um, that is where the first um, pilot project was started in 2002. In St. Lucia. Yes. That's amazing. Right. <laughs> and then it went on from there to be spread through the entire Caribbean in practice direction 2000 and of 2003, number one. Okay. And that practice direction then set out all of the various aspects of um, the mechanisms for introducing mediation into the court system in the region. Okay, so we can say that we are trendsetters and that uh, we can set the standard for right. mediation and ADR right. in the Eastern Caribbean. Right, because of course the headquarters of the court is right here in St. Lucia. It was there yes. at the time as well. So what we had then was it being rolled out through mm -hmm. all of the territories, the, the, the states, the member states, first of all, and territories of the Eastern Caribbean. But Justice um, Bell, what, to interject, what kind of impact did the introduction of mediation and ADR have in uh, settling commercial disputes? So what, you know, what was it like well, when this was introduced? First of all, the, the initial thing was that, well, you know, to try to determine what kind of dispute. It, it was, it did say, the practice direction did say what kinds of disputes would not be settled. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but it didn't try to say at first, well, only, you know, we focus on commercial or whatever. But the reality is that as long as there's a marketplace where people enter into contracts, mm -hmm. yes. as long as people are doing business and mm -hmm. using machinery and labor and that kind of thing, accidents are going to happen, you know, things on, on, on the road, et cetera, et cetera. All these things are interconnected. Right. So the more you're developing and the faster you're developing, the more likely it is you're going to be getting disputes coming to court over your development issues. Yes. And, um, and uh, when they come to court, they may not appear that way. They may, not, may appear very personal and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, it is really a person who had a contract to deliver something mm -hmm. and it wasn't delivered. And therefore, somebody wants to know, well, should they still pay? Or they, they actually feel they should have paid or that the other person owes them money because the thing wasn't delivered. And that's a contract breach and they want to sue. Question is, um, how important is the, is the business relationship? Right. Um, and then you start to look at those kind of issues. I'm sure Mr. Compton will have a lot more to say about that. But yes. you look at those kind of issues, then you realize where the opportunity is for mediation. Because even though on paper, it may appear as though this is a, oh boy, this is a difficult uh, dispute here. This is a real you know, parting of the ways. At the end of the day, those two persons may somewhere along the line still feel that they could do business with each other. Right. And if that is part of their feeling, well then mediation gives them the opportunity to settle this matter, move on, and continue doing business. Continue making money. Continue developing. Yes. Yeah, just as better, I, um, yes. I don't know what your take is on this, but um, um, from my perspective, I, I see the mediation process, at least when you go through the court system, it comes a bit late. Yes. Um, and what is your take in terms of um, making recommendations for mediation to form part of the pre-action protocol so that matters uh, are dealt with even before you get to the stage where you file your, your, your claim? Yeah, I have no difficulty with that. that that exists elsewhere. I saw uh, forums in New York City. I visited courts and I saw forums where lawyers have to make declarations mm -hmm. that they have tried mm -hmm. a form of alternative dispute resolution before mm -hmm. bringing a matter to court or before uh, the first case management hearing or the first hearing in, in, in the court system. So that is actually fairly normal. Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't do it at first because I think that the, the, the concern was at first that we wanted people to, to know that they were under the direction of the court. And we wanted the mediators to also be subject to a referral. We wanted it that kind of formality at first so that the, the mediator would have to wait for a referral from a judge or a master to have to get the mediator going under our court connected mediation system. Um, the concept that it could be broader whereby an individual could simply come to court and say, well, I did go to a mediator 
um, mm. and uh, you know, we okay. didn't settle or whatever as the case may be. All right. That is not uh, something that is, it should be difficult to implement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you so much for that. Um, I know we're on fire. <laughs> we're about to take a break and we'll pick up from this point afterwards. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. And we are back. We ended on a very interesting note about the role of uh, court-connected mediation and uh, mediation prior to entering into the litigation process. Mr. Compton, can you um, enlighten us about mediation and just continue along with where we stopped off? Okay, just to carry on from where Justice Bell left off. I want to refer to the practice direction already alluded to by Justice Bell. Mm -hmm. when, when the practice direction was promulgated and the thinking behind that at the time was that the court should be given the opportunity to manage cases and part of that management process included the opportunity and at the time it was suggested that the judges should recommend to the parties during the case management process that they try mediation. And what the court did was to train sufficient mediators so that, and put some on a roster so that the judge would have a panel of mediators mm -hmm. that persons could um, be referred to and would then mediate the cases. Now, I have to tell you that the court made it its business to train persons at the level to operate, at, at, at a level to operate with the court in okay. terms of resolving disputes. Now, there was a little bit of evolution in that the, the, the court or the practice direction said that the, the, the judges should recommend ADR in particular mediation. Yes. Now what happened in the evolution over time? The judges then, after we realized that mediation works, because I have to say it, at, and Justice Bell can support this, mm -hmm. in the initial stages, and that has been told to me by certain judges, some of them have gone to the great beyond, it was difficult at the time for the chief, chief Justice to get all the judges on board as far as accepting mediation. Many of them or most of them accepted it, but some were skeptical as okay. to, and, and, and it's reasonable. Judges would say, for instance, it sometimes takes us two, three years to resolve a matter. How do you expect a layperson with no legal training to resolve a dispute that is in the court in three hours? So people were very, this is how, you know, okay, initially yes. mediation was given three hours within which to resolve a dispute, but with additional time added. But gradually, people began to see that mediation works because, as I said, the mediators were trained properly to operate right. at that level. And in the initial stages, a number of cases were selected so that persons would find not too great a difficulty in resolving. So what happened in the evolution process is that judges became more robust oh. in recommending parties to mediation. Okay. And, and I remember there was a particular judge and she just had to open her eyes fairly wide, you know, <laughs> to the parties and they would understand what she means by recommending that they go to mediation. And we found this worked. 
Yes, so and the results were positive when yes, persons yes, yes. were referred to mediation. Now, the project, as Justice Bell mentioned, was set up in St. Lucia as a pilot. Mm. And uh, the pilot was expected to run for one year before it could be deemed successful enough to replicate it in the other OECS territories. It was so successful in St. Lucia and, and very soon after um, practice direction, um, 2003. Three. Two, Three. 2003. Three. Yeah. Yes. Number one of 2003. Yes. Even before that, the Chief Justice then appointed me to be the regional mediation coordinator. Now, I have to say that mediation is run with a regional mediation coordinator oh. and individual mediation coordinators in each of the territories. So okay. we went about identifying persons to be on committees in each of the territories and persons to be appointed as mediation coordinators in each of the territories. And after my appointment, what we did, we did not wait for a year. Okay. And we started the replication program That's by great. training persons, identifying and training persons in each of the OECS territories. So you find that within the year that it was supposed to be piloted in St. Lucia, we were piloting it in all the OECS territories. Being proactive. Yes. So, um, and we selected, there is a process for selecting persons uh, to be trained as mediators. And there's also <coughs> a process for appointing persons to be on the roster of court connected mediators. All these things were done very well okay. in, in the initial stages. So the project became very successful in each of the OECS territories within the year that it was supposed to be piloted in St. Lucia. So based on what you're saying, that the process is so structured and s proper that pub the, the general public and business owners and persons who want to access um, mediators know that they're trained to a high standard. Oh, yes, yes. A very yeah. high standard. So, so they have that confidence that they're getting well equipped persons. Oh yes, absolutely. And that was made absolutely clear in all our publicity in, um, information at the onset. Um, and it's important to note that the court is aware that not all the persons that uh, access its training mm -hmm. could be deemed s suitable to operate at the level of the Supreme Court. Right. We have persons, as was alluded to, who operate at the magistrate's level or who could um, operate at the community level okay. where the, the expectations at the community level may not necessarily be as great as at the court level. Because bearing in mind, not only can a trial judge send a matter to mediation, but we realize over time that even at the level of the appeal court, if a matter arrives at the level of the appeal court and the appeal court judges feel that this is a matter that could be mediated. They are free to send it to mediation even at that level. Okay. So they know that they have trained persons who could operate at that level okay. as mediators. And those persons who are not on the roster, and I must say it's not everybody who's on the roster right. who would be called to mediate because uh, the mediator has to develop himself or herself right. um, to be acceptable to the lawyers who are the greatest um, consumers of mediation. Okay. Uh, and uh, for that reason, you find some in all the territories of the OECS, you have some persons who rise up to the top as far as their selectability to mediate any matter. Okay. And there are others who would occasionally get mediations. That does not mean that the persons who are not selected are not good mediators because the court has a pre-selection process to select persons to be trained. Yes. And then after the training, there's another process to select those persons who could apply to be placed on the, on roster, the roster of court connected mediators. Okay, that and sounds then the rest really good. is for the, the consumers of mediation to determine who, who they want to select to mediate a particular case. That was very succinct, uh, <laughs> Mr. Compton. I'm sorry, but we have to take a break. But it's really great to know that we have a high standard for our court-appointed mediators. We will be back after the break. Oi, you realize you step on my toe? Well, do something about it. Gasai, bust in that money. Hold on! 
If somebody try to cross you Hold And if Martin start to take you Hold No need for war or violence Cause the police there to help you Hold If a trouble start in this session Alright, no need for aggression Hold We don't want no violence in the place Control your temper Respect each other Don't let no trouble escalate Cause you know better Control your temper Respect each other Don't let no trouble escalate Cause you know better Control your temper A message from Mission Boy Studio 758 Acid Creations And the Royal St. Lucia Police Force so we just found out that uh, not only is mediation available through the registry of the Supreme Court in St. Lucia, and not only are our mediators trained to a very high standard, but mediation is one of the choice preferences for settling disputes and settling conflicts throughout the Caribbean, and I can say throughout the world. Um, one of the things that we realize that's very prevalent in St. Lucia, and one of the things that we are pushing for, is the development of businesses, the development. We're trying to create an entrepreneurial mindset. Many women uh, engage in business activities. We have vendors, we have female farmers, we have female professionals and consultants. And I'd like to pose to you, Ms. St. Rose, how can you know, women better utilize the availability of mediation um, when they're faced with conflict, when they're in a dispute, especially um, you know, where there can be power imbalances, you know, employer, employee, you know, you're a vendor, you sell um, to a larger business owner and uh, for some reason you don't get paid on time, you know, how can women take advantage of what mediation has to offer? Okay, so for starters, Lisa, um, an environment where there's a process in place for settlement of disputes is very good for business. Um, it's also one of the means that, you know, you, 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 the country can use to attract investment. Right. Um, an investor would not like to know that you are operating in an environment where if you have a dispute, it will take years to get resolved. And sure. so that is a very good settle selling point for St. Lucia as a whole, that we have a proper system in place to assist with the resolution of disputes. Um, Businesses on the whole, people enter into transactions, there will be disagreements. Disagreements will arise, just as one of the things that go with doing business. Yes. And so it is very important that people are able to take advantage of that process to assist them in resolving disputes efficiently because mm -hmm. time has a value to it. Time has a dollar value to it. In that yes. you do not want to be caught up in a process where you are going into court of a protracted period of time right. when you have a business to run. Mm. In the case of women in particular, they face imbalances that we will have to accept. <laughs> yes. In that um, when, when, when a woman goes you know, into a dispute situation, say with a man, there is that feeling that the man is in a higher um, authoritative, power, <laughs> authoritative yes. position. Yes. And so I see mediation as one of them is that could assist mm -hmm. in resolving that sort of power imbalance. Yes. And to, to ensure that women can take advantage of the business opportunities that are available to them and don't shy away from the fact that I cannot deal with this business person because right. you know, I don't have the authority to bargain with them. Because or if a dispute arises, I cannot get it settled. Yes. And so I think that um, it is very good that we have a proper system in place. But I think that needs to be a more, more education needs to go out there to allow yes. people um, to be aware of the, the disputes that are amenable to, to, to mediation. To, to mediation. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience, I've come across a number of situations where um, disputes arise with financial institutions, for example where people have entered into agreements with the financial institution, then interest rates have changed without giving proper notice to the, to, to, to the business person. And as a result, they end up in a situation where the loan goes into arrears. 
then you'll find that the institution is taking action to foreclose on their properties. I have seen cases where mediation have successfully come up with a resolution in terms of allowing the parties to continue business, right? Yes. I have also seen cases where um, in the workplace, mediation has played a significant role in terms of resolving disputes between employer and employee, especially when it comes to situations where um, people are complaining about the workload compensation yes. right. and the imbalances that exist discrimination between, <laughs> discrimi between you know what is paid to a man versus yes. what is paid to a woman a man, right. i have seen cases where these things have been resolved through mediation um personal injury is another situation where i have seen mediation okay. come into play um where people have you know been able to reach agreement in terms of the level of damages you know that they would accept for loss of employment, for example, for um, pain and suffering. Okay. I have seen these issues come before mediation with successful, um, with successful resolution. The one thing I normally advise people um, when you enter into an agreement is to have a clause in there that speaks to mediation as one of the, the first routes that you would take in terms of resolving your dispute. In, in before you run to the courts for a resolution. Right. Um, from my perspective as well, uh, mediation is cost efficient in that it is that the timeline for mediation generally takes maybe you know three hours, six hours, depending on the nature of the resolution. And so for the businesswoman who does not have you know significant resources, this is a way of obtaining a resolution to a dispute in an efficient manner. That's that's re that's yeah. really really yeah. true. Okay. You wanted to add tag anybody on to else that, yeah. that point, before that we the, close? The whole thing about mediation is that it is empowering mm. because an individual who doesn't have a lot of resources and time for something like court would want to know that they can get the dispute resolved in a manner that is you know done quickly, f re relatively speaking, and relatively you know not very costly mm -hmm. yes and therefore um, individuals who may be involved in small business you mentioned vendors and so on which tends to be dominated by women they can see themselves as being empowered by the fact that they can now actually take charge of their situation and, and resolve their disputes by way of mediation with the assistance of a mediator and oh, highly trained yes, mediator. Yes, a well-trained mediator. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that, in, in fact, leads them to recognize that going down the road, every time they have a problem, it doesn't mean that you know, their business is probably facing closure or right. something like that. They have to they look for money. They can actually resolve the dispute yes. and go yes. on and move on with their lives. Yes, that's great, Mr. Compton. Final words? Yes, I wanted words? to yeah, add to what Justice Bell and Andrea said here. When a mediation is completed mm -hmm. uh, during the session, the mediator will actually write in ordinary language, no legalese, an ordinary language, an agreement yes. that the parties themselves have arrived at. And they will sign that agreement. But the mediation process allows for that written agreement to be sent back to the judge. Okay. The judge will read that agreement and confirm in his mind. N I mean, mediators are trained to recognize this as well. Yes. But as long as that agreement is doable and is not illegal, as far as the judge is concerned, the judge will then issue an order subsequent to the mediation agreement and will attach that handwritten mediation agreement to the order. That is and awesome. That order is enforceable in a court. That's amazing. So my viewers, you've heard it for yourself. Mediation agreements are enforceable by the court through the processes available. So please call us today, 468-7500. You can have a look at our website, www.lcmediation.org. Find us on Facebook, LC Mediation, on Twitter, LC Mediation, YouTube, LC Mediation. We're here to help you resolve your disputes in the quickest, most efficient way, and 
also to help enhance your relationships mm -hmm. so for the longevity of your businesses and your livelihoods. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to interacting with you online. When you and me cannot talk and we are in a deadlock, call the mediator to get us together. Mediation is the way to go. Everybody, mediation is the way to go. For conflict resolution, let us heal our nation.